America Hijacked, The Beginning of Armageddon. Written by C.M. Gray. Copyright 2008. All rights reserved. Mason Prescott was a media man for a small paper back in the day. One thing for sure, he kept true to the ethics of journalism. For that he faced many obstacles, but in the end he will always be remembered for his bravery as a reporter and a fighter of the opposition. When he made his way to the compound, we all found refuge in his optimism and his leadership. The city is dangerous and no matter how loyal one might be to the human race and our survival, sometimes the most dedicated fighters never make it out alive. The fight is very real, and it is all around us. I sit here and write this story based on the information shared with me. I tell the story in third person to give all newcomers some understanding of how we got here. I leave the rest up to each of you, our entire team, to decide where we go from here. Signed. Anonymous. It was only a local paper to rally his neighbors to community action, a free press project both personal and political in nature that in a time past was considered a constitutional right to free speech. But the year was 2020 and the idea of ever having an open society again seemed only to bring with it a silent submission from the majority, the sheeple. The Constitution had been deemed just a damned piece of paper by the nation's dynastic and tyrannical leader, and most people either fell too weak to fight, feared the repercussions, or had since slipped into blind conformity. The mainstream media had taken another direction the moment the fairness doctrine disappeared. And the deregulation movement had detonated the doors wide open to elitism, in essence, legal censorship. No one could turn on a television set without being subjected to the clear-cut manipulation of power and control over their minds. None except the few that remained whose minds still had the ability to think independently. Most people that walked the streets of any major city or small town appeared to be sleepwalking. A dream state society conditioned to focus on irrelevant subjects like sitcoms and network televised talent shows. Even the day's news was scripted and staged to relay only propaganda. News was no longer reported, but rather, it was managed. All news judgments were out the door along with limited government. The idea of no entangling alliances, and everything else the Republic had once stood for gone. The coercion of the media spin doctors had helped in taking control of what was once a sovereign nation, where liberty was replaced by a false sense of security. Both were lost. A nation once built on fighting tyranny had now jumped the median and was heading down the fast lane toward world dictatorship, a new world order. The idea wasn't one that went over well in its beginnings, but with time citizens and nations soon began to follow one way or the other. Clever contributions from the pharmaceutical and military industrial complexes assisted by offering friendly inoculations and a new breed of law enforcement, the taser. Either one of the methods seemed to work fine to help quell most. But for those who still wouldn't abide, there was always the camps. When do we stand up and face the enemy and who is the enemy anyway? Perhaps they are the same people we thought were our friends, our elected officials. And the corporations that lobbied the politicians now controlled everything that was once considered sacred, including the drafting of the new constitution. Americans were part of the North American Union where Mexico and Canada had joined and border control vanished. Semi-trailers filled with the corn once forced fed to us as food were being transported in from Mexico to fuel the demand for ethanol and customs revamped all previous policies and regulations. The food wars grew out of control as genetically modified crops replaced any semblance of natural vegetation. Now all organic seeds lie dormant in the doomsday seed vault inside a mountain secured by motion sensors and a dual blast-proof door at Spitsbergen Island. We were quickly introduced to the Amero as we watched the dollar collapse. And gold and silver, well, they were immediately outlawed. Bank runs made the Great Depression seem like a day at the amusement park by comparison. Who were these people that took control of America? Simply put, they were the enemies of freedom. But freedom was a concept that some still believed in and would do anything to resuscitate. Mason lied there in a military-style cot, his bare back pressed against the polyester sling cover. He closed his eyes in an attempt to escape the pain in his head. For a moment he tried to remember what happened, 
but the room was hazy and his thoughts were jumbled. The room was cold and empty. He could hear unintelligible voices out in the hallway and the sounds of footsteps just beyond the cold steel door. Black helicopters vibrated the skies just outside the building. Mason knew the kind of aircraft because he had spent many nights listening to them as they circled above his home, surveying and plotting aerial dumping points for small crop planes covertly used to dust densely populated areas of the city. Mason knew the planes weren't fighting global warming, the reason for the heavy carbon tax. There was at one point, strong evidence to suggest biological warfare against the citizens, and even some indication that the chemicals being sprayed were part of some mind control manipulation. That information was sealed or destroyed and the brave writers of such things were quickly sentenced to places like Abu Ghraib, Guantanamo, or worse. He had only taken a stand when publishing the paper. The headline of the most recent edition of the revolution read, Our founding fathers are rolling in their graves. The story went on line after line in an attempt to remind those citizens of what America had been built on and where it ended up. His hope was to wake up more people anyone who would stand up and fight for our God-given right to be free. But that sort of sentiment had publishers arrested for insurrection against the current established order. Seditious libel. That's the charge, said the officer who came in to check on Mason. Seditious libel? I remember a time, not so long ago, when there was something called freedom of speech. Those were the good o' days. So, what's next for me, a train ride, the gallows? Mason retorted as he tried to alleviate stress to his ribs. Man, what the hell happened? I feel like I got the shite kicked out of me. Guess it could have been worse. So, what list am I on? People like me get put on the red list or the blue list, usually. I won't ask you if I get a phone call, because I'm positive the answer is no. Mason squeezed his ribs tight with one hand as he sat up in the cot. The officer's name was Joe. Mason caught the name on his badge as his eyes scanned the room for a camera or some other form of technology that might be monitoring their conversation. He didn't see anything. If there was some monitoring device, it was concealed well. Besides, the room didn't appear to be the best in accommodations. The walls were water-stained and cracked. The floor was cement bare and certainly air conditioning was non-existent. The air was stale and cobwebs danced around the top of a small window about six feet off the floor. It wasn't a big window, but a small man could fit through if his life depended on it. Hey Joe, you seem like a reasonable man. Don't you remember celebrating Independence Day? Come on, Joe. You know what I'm talking about, right? Do you ever miss the barbecues, the fireworks and what it meant to be free? Mason was taking a chance with Joe. Very easily the officer could have sounded the sirens, and all hell would have broke loose. But Joe smiled at the question as if he were reminiscing. Seriously, that's enough of that sort of talk. You're going to find yourself swimming with the sharks if you don't keep it down. But if it is in consolation. I do remember such things, Joe alluded quietly as he pulled a plastic baggie out with some bandages, aspirin, and a handful of peanuts, and tossed it at Mason. Consider it gold, Joe said as he reached down to secure his gun. You're going to need your strength, if you plan on continuing your revolution. When I leave the room, you have about three minutes to get the hell out of this place. They're planning on giving you the chip any time now. Besides, it is the law, you know that better than I. So, keep moving and don't look back. <laughs>